Hello. Today we're talking about the impact of accounting transactions on financial analysis, meaning ratios. And we're going to look at unearned revenue that is now earned. Now, let me back up a bit. Remember at the uh, when customers pay you money, but you haven't done a thing for them yet, we debit cash and we credit a current liability account called unearned revenue. At the end of the period, we take a look at that current liability account, unearned revenue, and we ask this question, how much of that have we earned? In other words, how much of the goods and services that we promised that customer have we now delivered? So we've earned their, uh, the revenue on it. So when unearned revenue is now earned, that means that the revenue account is going to go up, but the current liability account is decreasing or going down. So when revenue increases because we've earned it, that means net income will go up, and our earnings or our net income per share will also increase. Well, current liabilities went down. So if current liabilities decrease, and the current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, and liabilities, the denominator, is getting smaller, that means the current ratio will get larger. Working capital, since current liabilities are going down, working capital is current assets, minus a smaller current liability means the working capital will increase. Debt to equity has to do with total liabilities over total shareholders' equity. So I have nothing, oh, there is a liability. So the liabilities are going down. My revenue went up, and if revenue goes up, that means net income goes up, which means shareholders' equity goes up. So what I have is, uh, the numerator, liabilities, are getting smaller. Stockholders' equity, the denominator, is getting larger, which means that the debt-to-equity ratio is decreasing. All right. Now, here's another one. Paid accrued wages. You'll remember at the end of every uh, accounting period, we make adjusting entries. And one of those adjusting entries is that we recognize the, the employees that we've used or consumed, their salaries and wages, this period, but I won't pay them until the next period. And remember that that accrued wages entry is debit wages expense, credit wages payable. So when we get to payday in the new year, we're going to pay that current liability. So when we pay accrued wages, that means I'm going to debit wages payable, in other words, the current liability is going down, and I'm going to credit cash, which means the cash or the current assets are going down. So current assets and current liabilities are both going down the same amount. Well, notice that nothing here has to do with revenue or expense, so no impact on net income or earnings per share. When I look at the current ratio, when I have a numerator and a denominator going down by the same amount, remember the proportionality between the numerator and denominator change, and that means that the current ratio is going to increase. Isn't that amazing? Run the numbers. It's really fun. So, like, take 6 to 3. If they both go down, they become 5 to 2. So, this was a current ratio of 2, and now it's a current ratio of 2.75. Isn't that amazing? Whereas the working capital, since they're both going down by the same amount, there's no impact. When I look at debt to equity, the liabilities are going down. So that means the numerator is getting smaller, which means the ratio will get smaller as well. And finally, I'd like to look at an adjusting entry called estimating your bad debts. And you'll remember that no matter if you use the percentage of sales method or if you use the aging of accounts receivable method, the entry stays the same. 
we're always going to be debiting bad debt expense, doubtful accounts expense, or uncollectible accounts expense. And we're going to be crediting um, allowance for doubtful accounts, uncollectible accounts, or bad debts. Notice how we have lots of names for the same thing. Now, remember the allowance is a contra current asset account, and bad debt expense is an expense account. So let's think about how does this impact the income statement. Well, expenses go up, so that means net income goes down. And if net income goes down, the earnings per share will decrease. Now, if I'm talking about the current ratio, this allowance for doubtful accounts shrinks my current assets. So here, my current assets are getting smaller, aren't they, because of this allowance. So if my current assets are getting smaller, that means my numerator is getting smaller, which means my current ratio is going to also get smaller. Working capital. Current assets are getting smaller. Liabilities don't change. So also working capital will get smaller as well. Debt to equity. Let's see. I've got an expense going on here. So uh, because the expense goes up, that means my net income goes down, which means my stockholder's equity goes down, which means my denominator is a smaller number, which means my debt to equity or debt to worth increases, doesn't it? So here's some impacts of transactions on ratio analysis or financial analysis. Thank you.